Okay. So, martini. What is the purpose of martini pot? No, not the purpose. What are the what are the things? Huh? Uh, memory. Memory. Good because of the. Yes, it is indeed. Do you know the proper name for that? Remember the name for the structure? Have you got it written? I've read it in my book, but okay. I don't have it with me. Devon, do you have it written down in your book? Um, what, is there a name for the structure? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, I think it's called Rondo Structure. Oh, okay. I don't have that really. Can you just check that I'm right, right please, on Google? Okay. I've got intellectual structure. Intellectual structure? Or intellectual memory. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's an, another way. Good. Yeah. Uh, anything else happening in this piece that is tricky? Going. Good? So the bowing memory, isn't it, really? None of the bowing is particularly difficult, it's just difficult to remember what happens where. The DR bowings. Yes. Yeah. More or less bows, good. In the left hand, anything? Um, hand raise? Yeah, I mean, let's just say finger patterns. It's not really a, a tricky piece for the left hand, is it? No. The minor section towards the end is a bit more tricky, but. Not really. Okay, I'm blocking this camera. Um, okay, uh, good. Minuet, new thing. Shifting. Well done, excellent work. Ornaments, excellent. What's kind of new about it? The minor section. Yeah, so we've got the major minor again. But when you play the whole thing, it makes it really long. It's a long piece. Which builds what? Stamina. Yeah, in all different types of ways, stamina. So keep playing, hopefully beautifully, with your posture good, etc. To keep your memory, to keep the idea of where you are, you know, all of those things. Good. Uh, anything with the right hand particularly new? With the bow hand? Not really. No. No. Good. Well done, everyone. Good button, G minor. Minor sec, minor. <laughs> the goldfish song story. Good. So, memory. Good. In the left hand, I mean, minor is also the left hand, right? So I might put intonation rather than minor, but that's because of that. Something else in red? dynamics and obviously we want these I mean again this is like gonna be in all of them now because if you don't play with dynamics and phrasing you're not doing a great job but it is also particularly you know for some pieces more important than others and I think for the 
right hand in your bottom G minor. Yeah, I think we just would do this, wouldn't we, really? Like the dynamics and phrasing is to do with the bow hand as well as the, the idea of it. Mm -hmm. And like loads of slurs. Yeah. Good. There is that like sort of weird bowing of the do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's worth putting specifically, yeah. but well remembered. Yeah, it is. Good. Humoresque, big new thing. Well, not totally new, but shifting. main point, good. What is the new thing, Devin? Portmanteau drifting. Good. Including portamento, excellent. What else is in there? In red. What kind of piece is it? Bill yeah. Romantic style. Very good. So what are we also hoping they will put into it? Maybe in review? It'll be green. It's oh, called um Uh, there is a harmonic at the end. Mm. I think we've had enough harmonics not to make a big is deal it about it. Yeah. No. It could be done in any of these pieces. But if you haven't learnt it by now, by the end of book three, to put into review, you've missed a big thing. Book one is about learning to play the violin, book two is about learning to. Thank you. Vibrato. You've got so much better at it though, babes. You should be showing it off all the time. Humoresque, shifting, including portamento, romantic style, vibrato. Anything particular so for the bow? Is that a review thing? Or is that it could be, yeah. So if okay. they haven't learned it, if they haven't learned how to vibrate in a piece by the time they learn humoresque, you put it in yeah. a review. Um, but if they have good vibrato by then, you just do it. And if they're halfway through and they might do vibrato on the long notes, fine. <laughs> So maybe in review. What's going on for the bow? Uh, bow distribution. Yeah, exactly. Great. And loads and loads and loads of. Excellent. Becca, what's the main point of Becca Gavot? Lifted strokes. Very good. And also, also in blue, kit? Blue. Uh, bow? Yeah, blue for bow. Uh, up bows to battle. Very good. Maybe we'll get enough money together to have one of those really exciting whiteboards. <laughs> Interactive. Oh, you, know, you can do board. all of this and then just print it off. Oh my god, amazing. Right, so up by staccato, excellent. Anything else? I accidentally. Good, yeah. D R release, whatever that means. Huh? That's more or less. Changes, yeah, lots of them. Um, 
more or less of one colour. And in red, big challenge. Memory. Thank you. And obviously, we're also going to put dynamics. DMP, dynamics and phrasing. But like I said, by this point, you hope that's just in every piece you ever play, even in your scales. Okay, good morning, indeed. We're nearly there. We're doing well. We're doing well. We will have finished it by lunchtime. Film sports. Great. Um, going to put that in both. Good. Upbeat music. Yeah. Up both. Should we just put? Sure. In red. Something that's somewhere else on the board. In this column. Some memory, yes, and what's the main thing that sticks out about this piece when you get to it? If I say let's play it now, most people go, oh, because it's so long, <laughs> which means it's a stamina piece. Yeah, it's got eight sections once you do the repeats. And well, then you've got the dark apo. So it's got you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sections to this piece. In the left hand, please, kit. Um, drum starts. Yeah, and agile fingers. Good. I'm going to put complex finger patterns. Agile fingers necessary. Things like where or what? Can you think of a bit, Devon, that would be tricky in the left hand? Um. I have it on my mind earlier, but I've... Yeah, that's okay. Look at your down. music then. Basically, anything that's tricky is going to be in a... So all of these are the low mm. ones, the low three. It would be good if you marked a bit higher, like larger, mm. what are the things that are tricky about this. So when you look okay. at it, it goes, oh, that's what's tricky, low one, yeah. low one. Okay. Or this is what's tricky, low three. Because when it's just black and white, it's very fair. Yeah. It doesn't help you really spot immediately what the tricky thing is. Uh, good. Do you always do the, the low three? idea yeah okay uh it's a good idea to build in them getting used to it mm -hmm. because in book four you get to the stage certainly by bark double and bits of vivaldi where you can't avoid doing that so if that's the first mm -hmm. time they've done it yeah. it's a complete head wreck for them okay. whereas if the, if you're like oh let's review this piece you can see this is where we did a three on a c sharp here mm -hmm. this is the same yeah because it's quite easy here whereas 
bits of the Vivaldi cadenzas, for example, it's not easy, so you don't want them to be then grappling with understanding a new thing at the same time. Yeah. Okay, double stops, up bows, memory, stamina, complex finger patterns, agile fingers, uh, ties, which are a bit weird, aren't they? It's kind of like syncopation, but it's not really. It's just like ties. Weirdness. Anything else we want to put in there? Energy. Energy. Uh, I mean, yes. You're completely right, but we're not going to put it as a new thing. It's not the first time we've needed energy. Or not a new thing, but a main... Upper note trills. Yeah. I know you do trills. That says ties. Oh, that's not really. Trills and ties. Good. Okay, last one. 11 minutes to do bath brewing. Easy peasy. First main new thing about Bath Brewery. More chords. Chords, good. It's the first what piece kit? We've had loads. Is this oh the first solo piece? Yeah, unaccompanied. If you do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. This is kind of difficult to see at the beginning. What belongs to what, isn't it? Boccarini, that's that. Maybe just and cool. then gossip. Yeah. <laughs> sort of something like that. Uh, okay, so chords, unaccompanied piece, what else? Trills by distribution. Trills. By distribution, excellent. Do, 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 do. Is that yeah, how chords? do we how do we talk about that? There are several ways you could Phrasing or echoes. Voicing. Not echoes. Not echoes. Voicing, exactly. Voicing. Phrasing or voicing. Yep. And it's definitely the first time we've had that within one bit of music, the voicing. Mm -hmm. We've had my turn, your turn for the violin and piano in lots of different pieces. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time you've got the important notes and the less important notes, so obviously. Mm. Good. Memory. What Memory. else? Something else for the right hand. No, you've got that. Uh, Loads of this. Dynamics. Uh, yes, that's... Not what you were thinking, but... No. <laughs> string crossing. I said that. No, you didn't. You said bow distribution. Uh, I thought I said string crossing. Oh, maybe it's in my head. <laughs> I can't fit all this in, folks. String crossing, and in the left hand, Same. yeah, obviously the string crossing, yes. I think agile okay. fingers is perfectly placed, isn't it? Because both of those apply to this piece as well. Yeah? Yeah. Anything else we need to remember? Tempos. Going slower than going fast. Yeah. I think we can put that within sort of phrasing. It's not officially, but yeah. Great work, people.
Very good. Right, so to finish this session, we are going to just pull out some things that you would want to use for certain um, technical, to, to develop certain techniques. Okay, so imagine you had, so Kit, go first, look at a book three thing and choose something that you imagine a student might be finding difficult. Okay, so if you had, for example, Tundra, who's going to do your exams, in front of you, and she's playing, um, let's say, Gavotte in D, and her bow's just in the wrong place all the time, what is one thing that you could do to help her with that, Devin? Um, as in, like, string crossing wise? No, as in the amount of bow she's using is wrong. So she ends up at the tip when she should be in the middle or at the heel, and so she's running out of bow or she's in the wrong place in the bow. Um, it's just simple overstrain exercises. Yeah, good. And what would you, what would those exercises be? Um, just different bow patterns of like tiny bows at the bottom going to the top. Yeah, the great. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like a copycat type of thing. Okay, can we just practice? Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Very good. Well done. Kit, what could you do with her once you've done that? How? With bows pressed with different bowings. And Good. Control. So how would you do, literally how would you do that? What would you say to her? Right, now we're going to do... We're going to play... Uh, like stop pulling the bow uh -huh. heel or hanging up high. Or Very Good. And then the next stage to develop that some more could be... So you've identified correctly, both of you, really well done, that the problem is that she, she's not really in the right place in the bow, so practice being in all the different places in the bow so she can get there. Great, yeah. And then what do you say, Kit? Would have been linking the two, so like up in the bow and then down to the bottom. Yeah, so what would you use for that and how will she know what to do? I'd play the bow. Yes, in what, and what would you, what would you play? A piece of the music? Yeah, a, a section of the piece. Yeah, maybe. So you could find a bit where the bowing needs to be really specific and work on that with her. But a more review orientated way to do it would be, so she can now find each part of the bow and get between them well. Find a piece that would help her to practice those skills and how would you do that? So when we look at this massive list, which pieces ping out for bow distribution? It's going to be in blue. Uh, <laughs> bow control? Yeah, yeah, Bure, absolutely. Bure. Yeah, Burry. So you could play Burry together and say to her, well, Devon, what do you think you would say to her if you're playing bow with a specific intention of working on bow control? Would you sort of play the rhythm but on other strings? Maybe? You could do and make sure that the bowing's in the right place. Very yeah. good. And then if you played it together, what would you say to her to help her focus on the right thing? Watch my bow. Yeah, can you copy my bow? Yeah. yeah, you might stop at the end of each phrase and make sure that you're in the same place as the bow. You yeah. might just stop automatically. You might give mum the flag and say, okay, whenever you want to, just wave the flag and we'll freeze. Yeah. And are we both in the same place in the bow? Yeah. yeah, mirroring. So like, can you, let's work on, uh, so if you're going to think about bure, dun, da, dun, da, 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 dun, da. Okay, have we got all the way to the heel? Can we both do that together? Mm -hmm. dee, 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 a slow bow. Are you in the middle now? Because otherwise you get da 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 yeah all of those kind of things very good uh, and then as you're going and then you would do the same thing with your gavotte and d okay can you mirror my bows and then can you do it by yourself mm -hmm. excellent and you could use as many as or as few pieces on the way there as you feel that she needs in the exam yeah is it possible to use whiteboard just to write the list down or not uh, or do I expect you to remember everything just to help just within you. Does that make sense? Let me 
ask. I don't think that they would... I, I would be surprised if they mind because it's really impressive that you can just write it down. Um, but I think that... I don't think you really need to have this... Like, obviously, this is the ideal situation is to know all of this in your head. But I think it's more like you need to know the key things for developing, for example, dynamics. Where do we start dynamics? Um, I mean, you could start it very early in book one. Maybe. Yeah, which piece is the first one with dynamics in it? Um, That's an echo. May song, song does have an echo, and you could say that that would be fine. The first one's yeah. going to tell it, Brody. Yeah. But and then you could just and then you would just say and so you would develop it through and then which piece has got more complicated dynamics? Um, or choose a piece that has more complicated dynamics. The minuet. Yeah, exactly. And then in book two. Uh, yeah, very good. Yeah. So it would just be something like that. So it's not like you need all of these and to say, well, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. You just need to be able to present something that would be like, okay, if we're going to work on staccato, like for what you just did for dynamics, okay, if we're going to work on staccato, what would you do first if you've got a child who's got sloppy staccato? Um, the sonata, yeah, very good then. Okay, cool. Good, which one? Yeah, exactly, Dr. Suzuki. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, because you always do that last, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, I'm thinking about if you've got a book two or three student, because oh, all your yeah. the students in your exams will be, it will be Tundra if you can play most of book three. In fact, I think she can play all of book three. So it's not, how would you teach this first, because that's yeah. your level one exam. It's like, how do you use the level one material and the earlier level two stuff to help you teach more effectively at level two? Does that make sense? So, um, so yeah, if she was playing, well, let's look at book three, which piece would show dodgy staccato the most? Well, or more than one piece. In book three? Or yeah, or in book three. Um, yeah, or maybe martini or maybe minuet. Yeah, because yum dum blah dum, you might get that, or you might get dum da 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 blum blum blah da 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 blum blum. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had that, then you would need to be like, okay, yes, we would start. So it's your turn. Start on open strings, then do Dr. Suzuki, then another book one piece that's for staccato. Uh, allegro. Yeah, good. Or perpetual motion. Yeah. Yeah, or etude. Good. And then moving in through book two. Um. Would the, the would the main one in would you not say long long ago in book one? For staccato. For oh, sorry, staccato. No, that's the book two version of. Okay. Okay. That's the variation. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So if it was the upbow staccato that was dodgy in Becca, yeah, long long ago would definitely be a piece. And then which other one? Yeah. Very good. If it was just dodgy staccato generally, you could choose from loads of them. Uh, Mignon, Lully, uh, or Long Ago variation. Yeah, you might look at the hooked bows in Witches Dance, Two Grenadiers, mm. um, or Boccherini. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah? Very good. And then, for example, okay, how do we chart shifting through the books? What are you doing during book one for shifting, Devon? Um, are you not really doing Good. Any yeah, you're not really doing any shifting. So what yeah. do you need to make sure they are doing during book one so that when they get to shifting, it'll be good or easy? Um, like not related to the pieces? Yeah, exactly. What are the requirements for being able to shift easily once you're into book two? Just having good posture and hand. Exactly, yeah. Check yeah. the violin position, check the hand position, make sure they're free in their left hands. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry? Uh, 
Uh, that's an exercise to start shifting, yeah, but like if in terms of just if you got a question about shifting, you would want to say during book one we're making sure that we're teaching good posture, good left hand position, so that as you approach book two and you start to get ready to think about using harmonics, uh, you know, that they can move freely and then you do the ghosties exactly right, and then which is the first piece you're gonna put a shift into, Devon? Um Either, oh, um, yeah, there is an either, there is an either. In, in book two? Yeah. Um, it's in green. Lily? Yeah, you could put Lily in as the first shift at the end, but also the harmonic at the end of Musette. Oh, yeah. It's a classic first place. And you yeah. would then want to say this might be in review or it might be the first time they learn it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then the harmonics in Boccherini, almost everyone does, even though it's not actually written in the book. Mm -hmm. And then in book three, which are the big shifting pieces? Humoresque. Before that? Minuet. Yeah, good. So Minuet and then Humoresque. Um, and then there's no shifting. There's a tiny bit in Becca. There's none in Gavotte D, and there's not any... There's extensions, but not actual shifting in Bureau. Exactly. So it's not like you need this whole list there to remember. It's just that you need those things. So before we finish for lunch, let's just make a list and we can kind of work through them in the next few weeks. So if you both could write this down, just this is the list of things that you might need to track in an exam question. Mm -hmm. Take techniques to trace in an exam question. Development of staccato or legato or mixed bowing techniques different finger patterns including keys and then more complex finger patterns slurs Retakes, accents, hooked bows, up bow staccato, double stopping, lifted strokes. More or less bows. Did you get all that, Devon, or do you want me to try and remember what I said? I think that was everything. Phrasing, would that be one? Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. Phrasing, dynamics. Pizzicato. Trills. Fast notes. Grace notes. Shifting. Did we say um, different finger patterns? Yep. Yep. Um, extensions. Intonation. That small thing. <laughs> Portamento shifts, guide note shifts, jumping shifts. Developing tone. Developing memory. Yeah, so that's exactly why we've got this, because this is like the huge map. Mm. 
And then one of the things you might want to do for like review, revision cards kind of thing is to put like upbow staccato on one side and then on the other side write the pieces that are like your pack for upbow staccato. Mm -hmm. Dynamics, your pack for developing that. And so then you could like put them all out on the floor and be like, okay, slurs. I think it's this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. Pick it up and see if you're right. Yep. Yeah? And we'll do that over the next few weeks as well. We'll like actually start to do that. So we won't just do this again every week. Thank God. <laughs> um, but then we will start to develop an awareness of those packs so that you can just like pull them out. And then vibrato and shifting are the kind of vibrato shifting sight reading uh, performance skills like how to get your students ready for a performance oh, yeah. um, group teaching Suzuki philosophy. That's oh. kind of the list of the other things that they might ask you about. So they might just say, tell me what the main things are about Suzuki philosophy. I guess parent education you would also put as a separate thing slightly. But you know, in a 10 minute viva, they're probably only going to ask you two questions. So you might get one about up bow staccato or about developing shifting or about developing tone or circle action or how to help your students play in tune, something like that. And then they might say, you know, what's the Suzuki philosophy to do? Like, how, how would you explain Suzuki philosophy to someone who didn't know anything about it or something like that? It's not, there's no way that you're going to have to, you know, it's not like you have to know all of this. Um, in great detail. And then they might just ask you something about your playing, like they did like they basically didn't ask you anything last year, did they? I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen again. Oh. But you know, they might ask they just might say to you, like, oh uh, what do you feel about your left thumb? How are you working on it? How would you help your students make sure that they don't develop the same kind of issue? Yeah. Like, you know, mostly it's very to do with what they see rather than just a random question. Good, okay, let's stop there. So, I'll see you at 10 past two. Well done. I'll just get out of the way in case you want to pause the video there. Okay, bye babes.